Hello everyone. In this video, we talk about using tree diagrams in computing probabilities. A tree diagram is a special type of graph used to determine the outcomes of an experiment. It consists of branches that are usually labeled with probabilities. Tree diagrams can make some probability problems easier to visualize and solve. If you encounter a question that does not involve too many events, you can construct a tree diagram in computing probabilities without ever explicitly referring to the conditional probability formula, the law of total probability formula, or the Bayes theorem. Let's take a look at an illustration of a tree diagram. In this tree diagram, first, either A1 or A2 will occur with probability P of A1 and P of A2 respectively. The outcome is usually specified at the end of the branch of the tree and the probability will be written along the branches. Now, suppose event A1 has occurred. Then three events may occur after event A1. They are respectively B1, B2, and B3. The probability of B1 occurring after A1 occur, we have the symbol P of B1 given A1. And similarly, for event B2 and B3 occur after event A1, the probability is P of B2 given A1 and P of B3 given A1. And now suppose event A2 has occurred. From the tree diagram, three outcomes can occur after event A2. Again, they are event B1, B2, and B3, with probability of B1 given A2, probability B2 given A2, and probability B3 given A2, respectively. Let's take a look at the example we have gone through in the last video. In a certain assembly plant, three machines, B1, B2, and B3, mix 30%, 45%, and 25% respectively of the product. It is known from past experience that 3%, 1%, and 2% of the products made by each machine respectively are defective. Let's take a look at the tree diagram for the problem. First, the product is made by the machines, B1, B2, or B3. And then if the product is made by if machines B1, then the product can be either defective or non-defective. So I use event D, denote defective product, and event D prime, denote non-defective product. And if the product is made by machine B2 or B3, the products can still be a defective item or a non-defective item. Let's fill out the probabilities along the tree diagram. From the questions, 30% of the products is made by machine B1. So here along this branch, we write the probability 0 0.30. And then 45% of the products and 25% of the products are made by machine B2 and B3 respectively. So we have the following input for the tree diagram. And so we have the marginal probability P of B1 equals 0 0.3, P of B2 equals 0 0.45, and P of B3 equals 0 0.25. And then once the product is made, the products can be defective or non-defective. So if the product is made by machine B1, 3% of the product is defective. So we write the probability 0 0.03 along the path leading from event B1 to event D. Similarly, 
1% of the products made by machine B2 are defective and 2% of the product made by machine B3 are defective. And so we have the following probabilities. P of D given B1 is 0 0.03. P of D given B2 is 0 0.01. And P of D given B3 is 0 0.02. We have not finished the probabilities in the tree diagram. We still need to fill out the probability that leading from B1 to D prime, B2 to D prime, and B3 to D prime. So the probabilities leading from B1 to D prime corresponds to the product which is made by B1, and this is a non-defective item. So 3% of the items produced by machine B1 are defective, and that is 97% of the product made by machine B1 is non-defective. So here we write down the probability 0 0.97 along this branch. And then for machine B2, 1% of the products are defective. So 99% or 0 0.99 corresponds to the product made by B2 and they are non-defective. Similarly, for the products made by machine B3, 98% are non-defective. So here we have the probability that P of D prime given B1 equals 1 minus 0 0.03 equals 0 0.97 and p of d prime given b2 equals 0 0.99 and the probability of d prime given b3 is 0 0.98 and this is the complete tree diagram for the problem let's compute the joint probabilities for example what is the probability that the product is made by machine B1 and the product is defective. So we will do the computation as follows. We start from the far left, the beginning of the tree diagram. And suppose I want to get the probability that the product is made by B1 and it is defective. So I'll move along the tree diagram, okay, leading to the event B1 and event D. When I move along the tree diagram from the left to the far right, I will multiply the probability that I've, got, that I've gone through along the branches. So here I'll multiply the probability 0 0.3 and 0 0.03 together. And this is the probability that the product is made by machine B1 and it is defective the corresponding probability is 0 0.009. And the symbols for this probability is the P of the intersection of B1 and D. So what is the probability that the product is made by machine B1 and it is not defective? So first, I'll move along the tree diagram leading to event B1 and event D prime, multiply the probabilities when I go along, 0.3 times 0.97. So the probability that the product is made by machine B1 and it is not defective equals 0 0.3 times 0 0.97 equals 0 0.291. So similarly, we can get the remaining joint probabilities. The probability that the product is made by machine B2 and it is defective equals 0 0.0045, which is the product of 0 0.45 and 0 0.01. And then the product made by machine B2 and it is not defective. The probability is equals 0 0.45 times 0 0.99 equals 0 0.4455. So we can get similar probabilities when the product is made by machine B3. So when you add up all the joint probabilities, the sum must equals one. Okay, so if you sum up 0 0.009, 0 0.291, 0 0.0045, 
0.4455, and 0.245, you should get one. And this is always the case. So let's look at a probability question. Suppose that a finished product is randomly selected. What is the probability that it is defective? How do we compute this probability using the tree diagram? Okay, so we will identify all the path that leads to defective items. So here we can start from the beginning, go through B1 and then D, or we can go from B2 and then D, or we can pass through B3 and then D. So these are the relevant path regarding this question. So we will get the joint probabilities of these three paths. So the first path, we get the probability 0 0.009. The second path, the probability is 0 0.0045. And then the third path, the probability is 0 0.005. And then the required probability will be the sum of these three probabilities. So the probability that the product is defective equals 0 0.0185. And in fact, this calculation is based upon the law of total probability. Now let's take a look at a conditional probability. Suppose that a finished product is randomly selected. Given that the finished product is defective, what is the probability that the product is made by machine B2? We are given the condition that the product is defective. So we have to reduce the sample space. The reduced sample space only involves the probabilities that the product is defective. So we no longer need the event D prime. So from this tree diagram, given that the product is defective, we get the reduced sample space, the defective product with event D. So this probability is 0 0.0185. We have calculated this value in the previous question. And now what is the probability that the product is made by machine B2? From this reduced sample space, we identify the path leading to event B2. So we have the path highlighted in red. The required probability is P of B2 given D equals the probability of the intersection of B2 over D over P of D. And the probability of the intersection of B2 and D is 0.45 times 0.01. This is the joint probability leading from event B2 with probability 0.45 to event D, the corresponding probability is 0 0.01. And then divided by the probability of D, which is 0 0.0185, then we get 0 0.2432. Let's take a look at another example. Suppose that a test has been discovered for a disease that affects 1% of the population. In clinical trials, the test was found to have the following error rates. 5% of the people free of the disease is tested positive and 2% of the people having the disease is tested negative. 
in clinical screening test, a positive result means the person has the disease. And a negative result means the person is free of the disease. So here we have the error rate. 5% of the people free of the disease, so the result should be negative, but they are tested positive. And 2% of the people having the disease, so the test result should be positive, but now the result is tested negative. Suppose a mass testing program is being proposed for the whole population. Anyone with a positive reaction will be suspected for having the disease and will be brought to the hospital for further observation. Okay, so this is the summary of the problems of the clinical test. The disease affects 1% of the population and the test has the following error rate. 5% of the people free of the disease is tested positive. 2% of the people having the disease is tested negative. Let's construct the tree diagram. The people either have the disease or not having the disease, and the disease affects 1% of the population. After the clinical test, no matter the people has the disease or not having the disease, the result can be positive or negative. This is the tree diagram for this problem. And then we input the probability. The disease affects 1% of the populations. So here we have 0 0.01 along the branch leading to the people having disease. And that means 99% of the population is not affected by the disease. And then 5% of the people free of the disease is tested positive. Okay, free, free of the disease means the person has no disease, not affected by the disease but the person is tested positive. So this 5% corresponds to this branch. And therefore, 95% of those people who does not have the disease is tested negative. And then the last part, 2% of the people having the disease is tested negative. So the probability 0 0.02 is written along this branch. People having the disease, but they are tested negative. And then the remaining branch, the people having the disease and tested positive, the corresponding probability is 0 0.98. This is the complete tree diagram. And then we can compute the joint probabilities. The probability that the person actually carry the disease and the person is tested positive, this probability is computed as 0 0.01 times 0 0.98, which is 0 0.0098. Similarly, the person who carry the disease but the person is tested negative, the corresponding probability is 0 0.01 times 0 0.02 equals 0 0.0002. A person does not have the disease, but the person is tested positive, the corresponding probability is 0 0.99 times 0 0.05 equals 0 0.0495. And then we get the last joint probability. The person does not have a disease and tested negative. 0 0.99 times 0 0.95, we get the probability equals 0 
9405. Let's take a look at a probability question. If a person is tested positive, what is the probability that the person will be actually free of the disease? So we are given the condition that the person is tested positive. This is the reduced sample space. We don't need the information regarding negative result. Okay, so we don't need the branches along leading to the negative result. And then from this reduced sample space, what is the probability that the person will be actually free of the disease? We want the probability that the person has no disease given that the result is positive. We are interested in the probability that leading to the event of no disease and positive result. So this is equals to 0 0.05 times 0 0.99. This is the probability that the person has no disease but tested positive. Okay, 0 0.05 times 0 0.99. The probability that the person has no disease but tested positive. And in the denominator, this expression corresponds to the probability that the result is positive. The probability of having a positive result using the law of total probabilities or from the tree diagram, this probability is equals 0 0.01 times 0 0.98 plus 0 0.99 times 0 0.05. So this is the expression. Upon calculation, we get 0 0.8347. That is, if a person is tested positive, 83.47% of the time, that person will be actually free of the disease. So from this result, you don't need to panic if you get a positive result from the test. All right, so that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. And in the next video, we will talk about random variables.